So I mean, looking around for an outside half to fill that hole left by various injuries, but the two brothers are being picked, but not Rob. Have you had any conversations with the block management about how Rob's going this season? No. Um, no, they've been relatively quiet pre the autumn internationals and, and, and during. Um, so, yeah, communication. Does that surprise you, given the form he's in at the moment? Because it, it, it reminds me of when he came over for a short sort of spell before he went back again, and he was absolutely flying then. Yeah, I guess he does. I think he is international class at present. He's, he's one of the best performing outside halves in the Premiership, and it's one of the best competitions in the world. So, um, what's what's their losses are gain over that autumn international period, Chris? Well, I know you wouldn't like to lose another one, but <laughs> uh, they've expressed their uh, well, their happiness with the, with, the, with the twins, even though the A team didn't go particularly well, which is good for them to hear so they know they're still on the World Cup radar. I'm just slightly confused why they haven't even looked at Rob. Yeah, you me both. Yeah, I, I, I probably will. I definitely will pick up the phone to, to them over the next few weeks uh, in the aftermath of the tour to get some feedback on, on the Twins and I'll ask them then. So I'll let you know. Thank you. Uh, I haven't asked you this a couple of weeks because I missed, missed you last week, but what is the, the scenario with, with Rafi in terms of injury? It was a broken arm, was it? When is he back? Yeah, Chris, I missed you too as well, mate. Not having you here, there's something not right. We must keep writing it. <laughs> <laughs> it is a broken wrist and I, it, it was a, a relatively nasty break, but the operation went well. Um, 10 to 12 weeks uh, and he's already a couple of weeks into that now, isn't he? So, 8 to 10. He's had a horrible run, hasn't he? He will. Yes, he will. Every player goes through some kind of injury crisis and I, you know, this is the biggest test of... <sighs> Any professional sports athlete, I reckon. How you, how you respond to this as a setback or as a means to get better? We've got relatively good evidence within this organisation that we're able to build them back and get them stronger. I've already had the chat with Raf yesterday about like um, making him super robust. So whilst he had his, his hamstring injury, he obviously wasn't able to work on his on his fitness per se, just on his upper body strength. And now he's, but now he's broken his wrist. The one positive that we can take from this um, is that he's able to work on his uh, repeat sprint efforts and his kicking game. So he's going to come back better, I imagine. Excellent. And, and your feeling is heading towards Christmas now? I mean, some teams have had a big break. You had yours. And do, do you feel that you're where you want to be, given all the things that have gone on? Because at least yet another one of those seasons where nothing is simple. We feel like we're in a really good place, Chris. Um, we know over the course of the pre-season that if we've got training, the intensity of training right, uh, the nature of training, then we could hit the deck running, as we did. Um, although within all of that, there's still a necessity to be battle-hardened, to be kind of game-ready, match-fit. Um, we've, we've opted for the, the freshening up Freshing the lads up physically and mentally as opposed to the keeping them ticking um, or keeping them playing because post that Gloucester game there was quite a few bodies who were, who were carrying knocks. Um, only time will tell, like we need, to, we, need to, we need to gauge where we're at once we play Bristol having had two weeks sabbatical from the Prem. But we feel good, like we feel like we're in a good place, we feel tight and everyone's crystal clear as a game model and what the tactics are for this weekend. Excellent. Cheers, Alex. Cheers, mate. Oh, sorry, Alex, how are you? I'm good, thank you, Kieran. What words of wisdom are you going to put in my mouth this week? <laughs> um, what's going on? What is the uh, latest with other injuries in the squad? Ben Curry went off yeah. against Gloucester. Simak and Tomo Flaherty were injured against Saracens the week before. So, what's the latest in terms of other injuries to players who, who, who've missed the last game or got injured in that last game and their availability this week? Yeah, Flats um, broke his jaw, as you know. Had an operation and a plate put in. He was really sore in that first bye week, 
but I'm happy to say that he um, put partook in his first unit session today. So he's like back on the field and running, and as chatty as ever. And that was that was the only positive you could take from his in breaking his jaw that he shut him up for a week. But now he's back to being just an, a, a, an excited, buzzy menace around the training ground. Um, ben Curry is a, probably another week off, certainly Ulster, because we, we have a bye week next week, so Ulster will be up for selection. Simax up for selection um, this week and trained really well today. I think that's it in terms of injuries. Apart from the long terms, like Ford is on track, you know, mid Jan ish, late Jan. In regards um, the, the the guys away in England at the moment, obviously we've spoken a lot about Manu and the the conversations between Sale and England about the game management and time management as to how many games he plays in a row and how many minutes he plays. Are you? happy with the number of minutes he has played obviously he started against Argentina played 50-60 minutes was on the bench against Japan and then came on uh, or then sorry then started against New Zealand are you happy with the management because some people might say well even though he was on the bench against Japan he, he was still playing he still trained he still played so are you happy with the minutes that he has had in terms of that management of his minutes yeah Look, they've, they've been nothing but brilliant in their open and transparent communication as to his overall loading, um, both in training and playing. Regardless, you know, that this is my opinion, am I happy? Yes, I am. I, I feel like we're working collaboratively really well, but uh, whether I'm happy or not, it's out of my control, isn't it? Kieran, like, with, he's an England player and he, he's under their jurisdiction, but I believe both parties are looking after him as well as we can at the moment. Been a few weeks since I asked the question, so I'll pop it again. What 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 is the latest with with, with Manu's future? Is there any further down the line, or is it still conversations happening? Both parties want it, but it's still a case of trying to see if you can fit his rather big jigsaw piece into the whole jigsaw. It is as it was, Kieran. Yeah. Um, so we just stalled all of that until he comes back from international camp. I didn't even want to bother that with him whilst he was away. Just let him focus on what he's got to do for uh, king and country, yeah. You mentioned a few weeks back about kind of the importance of player retention before you start thinking about recruitment of other players. It's about keeping the best players, the best young players at sale. Are you, are you confident that all of those players are signed onto new contracts, that they are all together, or are there concerns that there may be a few that you can't fit into, into the cap? Yeah. I'm confident that we were on track with signing the, all the guys we prioritised in terms of signing for succession and re retaining in terms of succession. But as those players increase in salaries, as they should do, being young players who are um, becoming more senior, there's like a cuckoo effect where other players will get pushed out because of the restrictions of the cap. So there's still a few convers uh, yeah, there's still quite a lot of conversations to be had. Um, we know where we want to go now, but we, we have to finalise and, and have those conversations in the forthcoming weeks. It's the, it's the worst part of the job. We spoke, uh, I think the last, since, since the last time we spoke, obviously some new signings have come in. Ryan Mills has come in. From Wasps and two other players, the two young lads, Rocchetti and, and Asher, and both Rocchetti and Ryan made their debuts on on uh, on Friday. How pleased are you that you secured those players and, and with the younger players on, on long term deals? And, and how impressed were you with their performances in, in the case of Rocchetti and, and Ryan on Friday? Um, re, it look, we, we needed those numbers for strength and depth. Um, Millsy at, at a senior level. You know, with the centres that aren't here and the injury-prone centres that we've had in the past, and he's just fitted in really well. Like he speaks unbelievably well, um, very accurate trainer um, and committed. So we're going to see more of Millsy in that first team. Ricchetti, there's a pathway for him moving forward. 
with an opportunity to learn under one of the best with Manu over the next six months. Like he's he's got a toilet like Manu. <laughs> like when you look at him, he's gonna be a by that I mean he's got he's really heavy set around his legs. He's a proper decent ball carrier. But he's like 18, 19, isn't he? So that's early days for for Ricky yet. But he again he's fitted in and I think he's enjoying his time here. And Asher out of the three is probably the slower burner because he's a tighter prop. But again, I've been like, the lads are really impressed with how he's scrummed and he's had a couple of goals against the first team. Um, he is set to play Nat 2 this weekend and in playing well there, we'll, we'll push him up to Nat 1 um, with Sale FC, so we've got a decent enough plan for him as well. They've done What they've done is filled the holes really well and we're very grateful for them for seeing and accepting and seeing the reasons why they want to come here. The holes in which our own academy system, uh, the gaps in which we had within our academy system for succession, they've filled those holes, they've been accepted, they're probably everything and more than what we perceive them to be. Jason Wilbur was also set to make his debut on Friday and had oh, to pull out. Is it, is it a tweet groin and, and is it anything serious? No, no. It's 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 not serious in terms of him being able to get over it. It's serious with respect he's been here for four or five months and everyone wanted him to see to see him out there because he's been training the house down. But unfortunately, like Joe Carpenter got in there and, you know, has been premiership young player that, the month twice, he's been our man of the match twice. Like no one could foresee the meteoric rise to this lad, apart from me. Uh, <laughs> that he's had and his ability to be able to sustain it, which has been mega. So um, he'll have to wait for his opportunity, and it will come because it's a long season. Uh, there's more to see a Jace yet, yeah, definitely. Cheers, Alex. Thank you. Cheers, pal.